Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to Code Wars. Now at the moment, I'm still eight coup as we can see here, but I'm hoping I can move up to seven coup by the end of tonight. But let's just jump right into um, the first challenge here. And also, uh, before we start, just quickly, um, if you want, you can follow me on Code Wars. I'll leave my link to the profile down below. Um, if you want to track my progress or see if I'm cheating, whatever it might be. Um, but yeah, let's, let's jump into the first uh, question here. So we have multiples of three or five. So we can see here, uh, it says, uh, any numbers, uh, or sorry, if we list all natural numbers below 10 that are multiples of 3 or 5, we get 3, 5, 6, and 9. So that also doesn't include 10. Um, and the sum of these numbers is uh, 23. So 3 plus 5 plus 6 plus 9 is 23. So uh, the function here is going to take in a number, for example, 10, and then output 23 as the answer. So upon reading this, uh, my first, um, you know, possibly naive thought is going to be to loop from 1 to 10, non-inclusive of the 10. And then if the number is a multiple of 3 or 5, then we're going to add to the total. Otherwise, we don't. And we can see here, we also, uh, it also says, if the number is multiple of both 3 and 5, only count it once. So that's also fine in terms of how we're going to approach this. Um, but one last thing here as well is if the number is negative, then return zero. So for this here, the very first thing to do is to consider that um, that uh, negative uh, condition. So we can say here, first off, if the number is uh, less than or equal to zero, then we are going to uh, return, um, what do we return? Return zero. Now, to be honest, we could also even just say less than or equal to two because we know that any number less than two is not going to be a multiple of three or five. Um, that multi that possibility of being a multiple starts at three. So we can include two there. Now, in terms of how it's going to work, well, let's do a for loop. Let's say for let i equal to uh, three to begin with, then we're going to say uh, i less than an equal or equal to number, and then i plus plus. So of course, we are going to get between three and nine inclusive. Now, what's going to go inside here? Well, we can say if uh, the number being i, I might actually just call this n because it's not really an index, is it? It's more like a, a numerical that we're counting up to. So let's say n, if n mod three is equal to uh, zero, then it's going to be a multiple of three. So we can now simply increase the sum of some sort of total. So let's declare this total here equal to zero to begin with. And then we're going to say total plus equals then provide n. Now we can also use an else or an else if should I say here to then say n mod five equal to zero. In that case, once again, total plus equals n. We could even combine these conditions to say uh, if n mod three is equal to zero, then I can say or uh, n mod five equal to zero, increase that total. And that's basically it. Now, I think the way I would approach this in a production application might be to actually do a negative checkup here instead. So we could say if n mod three does not equal zero and it also does not equal, um, does not equal five, sorry, zero for the five as well, then we're going to continue and skip past iteration. Then put the main code below the condition. So total plus equals n just like that. And I might even put this on a single line uh, just because it's not, it's not too long as a condition. So this might here, sorry, this right here might work. So let's now return total and see if the tests run and we get a good result. I think we will and there we go. So this definitely worked and like I said, it's probably a naive solution, but um, I don't want to spend too much time on this one. I'd, um, I, I don't think I'd rather sort of see what other people have done. So let's just attempt that there and see how we go. I'm sure there's going to be some really intelligent solutions here. Um, but let's just submit that and see, see, yeah, see how we go. Okay. Okay, fantastic. So that wasn't as, I guess, 
uh, wasn't as naive as I thought maybe. So it keeps going down. A lot of people had this solution. Um, that's interesting. Let me just close all this stuff here. So using, uh, using an array of numbers, then keys, I guess this is similar to sort of creating the array of, or sorry, creating the sequence of one to nine or whatever it might be. I think one thing I'd... Okay, so a lot of people started at three. That's, that's of course, good. Um, so, yeah, I think it's very straightforward there. Very similar solution. So let's just move forward to the next one and see how we go. Okay, string ends with. Interesting. So make a solution that returns true if the first argument passed ends with the second argument, also a string. So A, B, C, and then B, C returns true. And then, of course, A, B, C, D returns false. This here is actually already a function in JavaScript or a method in JavaScript. So it's going to be really straightforward. Let's, let's train here and we can actually just make use of the built-in string uh, ends with method. So let's just simply from this function, let's return string dot ends with and then ending. And that's all it is because, yeah, like I said, ends with is going to test whether or not this string ends with this string and it returns true or false which is basically what this question's asking anyway so it should be quite straightforward let's just let's submit this now could i have decided to do my own implementation that could be an idea to be honest i probably should attempt my own implementation of it let's just test it real quick and see okay so we do get the pass but I think I'd rather do it myself because it's just a, a copy. So how are we going to approach this? How do we test if the string ends with these characters? Okay, so I think I think my first thought here uh, might be to use regex. So what we can do is we can say, you know, we can use regex and say A, B, C. Then we can test and provide the second argument, then use the dollar sign, I believe, in regex for the token to represent the end of the string, and that will give us that result. So, I think we can probably go ahead and do that. I mean, we could start messing around with the indexes and seeing if we can get something to work there. Um, but to be honest, if we're going to do the regex idea, we may as well just use the ends with. I think the they're probably similar in terms of the complexity. So I might just return and use that ends with just because I want to move on to a, to a bit more of an interesting question. So let's do ends with ending and then just attempt that. I was going to try it myself, but it might just be um, too much. So let's just move forward and sort of go to the next one there. Okay, so a lot of people had the exact same solution. String ends with fair enough. Uh, a bit of protection there with the with the typing. Uh, that's interesting. So that's definitely a good solution without the ends with. Um, you simply slice the string. If you provide a negative index to the uh, to the slice method, it's going to return the slice of the string, but starting from the last index, then backwards based on whatever you pass in. For example, if you say negative four, it's going to take the four last characters and give you that. So that's Definitely a smart solution there. So let's just move forward now and go to the next one and see how we go. So far, they're all 7Q and 6Q, but... Oh, there you go. I'm actually 7Q now. Perfect. So it moved up a little bit. Okay. Let's try this one. So is this a triangle? Implement a function that accepts three integer values, A, B, and C. The function should return true if a triangle can be built with the sides of given length and false in any other case. So in this case, all triangles must have a surface area greater than zero to be accepted. That is very interesting. So I think what's happening here is, is this gonna be too complicated? Because in order for a triangle to be created, the lengths of the, um, the lengths of the sides just need to be a positive integer, I'm pretty sure. Let's say you have numbers 1, 2, and 3. One side can be 1. 
the other side can be two and the last side can be three. That's still a triangle, right? So let's let's just try and see what happens. So I'll train this. Um, interesting. So one, two, two gives us true. Seven, two, two gives false. Why is that? If you had a triangle with seven and then two and then two, ah, oh, it doesn't connect, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it won't connect up. Okay, fair enough. That is definitely interesting. So there might need to be a bit of maths here. Now, uh, in the school I went to in Australia, I think you learnt this kind of thing in year nine or year eight. So I might need to resort to Google here to sort of figure out um, the the maths behind the triangle. So just, let me just go into Ecognito here and just see if I can uh, come up with or Google some um some answers here so how to determine if uh the lengths the lengths of a side make up a triangle let's see how we go here okay so i found this article how to determine if the three if three sides of lengths are a triangle um so we need to use something called the triangle inequality theorem which states that the sum of two side lengths of a triangle is always greater than the third side. If this is true for all three combinations of added side lengths, then you will have a triangle. So formula, A plus B is greater than C, A plus C is greater than B, and B plus C is greater than A. Okay, so we can probably just put this straight into the code and it's probably going to work. So let's put this on the side here. And we have A, B, and C. So if we just do return A plus B is greater than C, and A plus C is greater than B, and B plus C is greater than A, and I think we should have a good answer here. Let's test it and see what happens. And we and we get a pass there. Let's attempt it and see how this goes, because I think. You can't get simpler than that, and there we go, that's fine, that's, that's, that's perfectly fine. Let's submit that, and I'm sure other people are going to have probably the exact same answer, but we'll see. There we go, the exact same answer. That's interesting. Get the max of these and see if it's less than the total divided by 2, that's, that's interesting. Using sorting, that's, that's definitely interesting to use sort here. We have a couple of different conditions being checked and returning true explicitly. Okay, fair enough. Um, let's do one more tonight because it seems like these are pretty straightforward. I'm sure as I continue this series, there's going to be a lot more challenging ones. It's going to be a lot more than just, sorry, it's going to be one, one challenge per video probably, but let's just see what happens. Okay, let's train this one and see if we can make the six coup by the end of tonight. So you are going to be given a word. Your job is to return the middle character of the word if the word's length is odd. Return the middle character if the word's length is even. Return the two middle characters. That part there definitely makes it a little bit more interesting. So to return the two middle characters instead of a single character. So let's, let's actually handle these separately first and then see if we can somehow merge them together in one sort of block or whatever it might be. So I think the most obvious thing uh, firstly is going to be the odd uh, case. So let's say here if s.length mod 2 is equal to 1. In this case here it's an odd number. So I'll just say here odd number. Because if there's a remainder of the division of 2, then we know it's negative. If it's not, then it's an even number. So odd number, sorry, odd length, probably a better term for that comment. In this case here, we can simply get the, we can divide the length by 2. So I might actually go up here and just say const uh, half length equal to s dot length divided by 2. And for this here, for the odd one, we're going to uh, ensure that it's... So we're going to math.seal this because we want... If, for example, we pass in 5, 5 divided by 2 is going to be... Uh, that's going to be 2.5. So 
two point five, and then we we actually want to actually no, we 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 want to floor that. So if we get two point five, we want to say okay, bring that down to two because it goes zero, one, two, three, four for the indexes. So in that case here, we're going to say return s at index, then half length. So math dot floor, then pass in here the half length, and this is going to handle. Um, that situation with the odd number. Now, if it's an even number, so I'll say here, even length, then we're going to do what? Well, it needs to return a string, so we can probably, uh, hmm, let's return here, s, then math.floor, and pass in half length, then, also return s and then math dot floor the sorry math dot seal this time the half length again so essentially now we're saying let's append the the first occurrence of that uh, of that uh, character and the second occurrence so the second like for example d here or, or s return that because using math.seal takes you from you know one whole number between these two let's test this and see how we go and okay so expected ss to be es so this is probably which case what would be the uh okay test here that's interesting so okay we pass in four we divide it by two we get two okay fair enough so in the case, okay, because an even number would be a whole number for half length, there's no point math.flooring or math.sealing it because it's a whole number. So instead we must, uh, we must subtract one on this side and keep it for the other side. So if I provide half length here and then half length minus one, just like that, it should be fine. Because, for example, if you pass in test, 4 divided by 2 is going to be 2. So, get the index at 1, which is going to be E, sorry, E, plus get the index at um, 2, which gives you S. Let's test it, and fingers crossed, perfect, it works. Um, now, how are we going to shorten this potentially? Can we shorten it? I don't know. Because these things here, they, they kind of have their own separate logic because the odd returns one, the even returns two. So I might just submit this. I'm sure if I had more time, like five, 10 minutes, we could try and figure out a way to do it within a single if block or something like that. But let me just attempt it and see how we go. Maybe it's better than I expected. Let's submit that and yeah, let's see what happens. All right, what happens here? Okay, interesting. Okay, so using substring, yeah, fair enough. So substring there is obviously, let's see, so math.seal, if you divide the length by two and you subtract one, you're going to probably, um, in the case of an odd number, you're going to get that middle section, your math.sealing, it brings you up and then you're saying how many, once I got that number, how many characters do I want? And in the case of an even number, you you, uh, you get two characters. In the case of an odd number, you get one character. So that's interesting. And it looks like people here are uh, using slice quite a bit. A lot of slices going on. So I think, yeah, I mean, my solution was probably a lot more verbose. Um, but yeah, there you go. So using substring for that definitely makes sense because you want to get a part of the string. You want to, of course, slice it or use substring there. So there you go. Uh, I think we'll leave it there for tonight. I moved up from 8 ku to 7 ku. Not a bad result. Um, hopefully next time we get a bit more uh, challenging questions and you know we can spend a bit more time trying to think of the perfect solution for whatever it might be. So that's all for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.